Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, a little extra video for uh, this second uh, video on this Monday. We're going to have a look at the JMA season model uh, for uh, this video. So um, we're going to look at the next three months in terms of uh, 500 millibar high dominance initially, and then we'll have a look at temperature and precipitation uh, and all this uh, from a truck going to be that cheesy as well. It can take us through winter period, December, January, February. So uh, it could be an interesting watch. This is, of course, ahead of the third and final winter 2000. 21 2022 season world roundup that we're going to be releasing on Saturday where we get something like 15 long race rides together and see what they're all showing uh, for the winter but of course on that video uh, with so many other miles get from we can't sort of drill down into the detail you get a lot of detail from the uh, from the JMA you know so um, we always like to take this one out when we can isolate it out and have a look at it look at it in its own terms. So that's what we're going to do uh, for this uh, second video uh, on this Monday morning. Uh, we're also going to have a 10 to 14 day uh, coming up for you uh, later on this afternoon. And if that was enough, at 6pm, uh, we will be releasing part two of the 12th and penultimate winter 2021-2022 update. So that's coming up for you, part two coming up for you um, this evening at 6pm. Please like, share, subscribe on all of the videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, let's Let's have a look at the uh, 500 millibar height anomaly for December then from the JMA, from the North Pole and Arctic view down, shall we? So, of course, this is the North Pole just here. We've got the wider Arctic circle around there. They've got mid latitudes around here. Red, orange and yellow, or yellow, orange and red, extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure, and blue to below average heights, which is low pressure. You can see that in uh, December, so this is being anomaly for December, you can see that in December, a very anti-cyclonic month is being forecast by the JMA, with lots of high pressure dominating across the northern and western Europe. We've got low pressure down here, uh, going down in towards the southern parts of Europe, south Spain, and at North Africa. Now, that high pressure is just about in a position to pull in something rather colder from the east at times. However, it's not a classic sort of scanning high. You have to take that high pressure a little bit further north to be, to be a classic Scandinavian high. But nevertheless, it's December, so we bring the wind in off the continent, if that's right. Um, so a relatively cool month would be possible, I'd say. I wouldn't go as far as going, you know, cold. I wouldn't say it could be a very cold month. Um, but a cool month with, with regular frost, maybe some fog at times as well. And uh, just a rather anti-cyclonic looking signal there uh, for December. But what we would also get is a very dry month uh, with that. Now we go through to month number two, uh, which is January. And to be honest, it doesn't show that much change, actually. So it's a very dry winter coming up, if this is right. January again, the above average heights, high pressure sat over just to the east of the country, trying to extend north, but again, not really in a position to be overly cold. We're not bringing in proper easterly winds. We're probably just bringing the air up off the continent. Um, you know, so again, a rather frosty, quiet month would be likely. Uh, maybe fog at times. Um, and yeah, very, very dry, uh, I think, signal for both, uh, for both December and January. A very quiet winter. Now, things look a little bit different as we get through to February. This is month number three, though, so it's a long way out. Uh, we start to get some lower pressure developing over and to the south of the country. We have high pressure more towards the uh, northeast. So it looks like it will probably start bringing the wind in from more of an easterly type direction, I think. And with a low pressure to the south, that would provide some precipitation. So funnily enough, February probably turns out to be the wettest month of the winter, which is a little bit unusual. Normally, December and January are the wetter months, and then particularly December. And then, you know, you get through to the latter part of winter, and it tends to get drier um, when you get to February. February is usually, usually the driest month of the winter. It's doing things the other way around, with December having the driest signal. And, uh, and February, perhaps the wettest signal. And if wind does get into the east, obviously there might be some uh, wintry potential in with that. So, um, you know, we'd have to keep a close eye on what's happening up here with this higher pressure 
to, to the north and to the northeast. But the way things are lined up there, high pressure to the north blocking, and it is like a blocking feature now, uh, that high pressure has turned into sort of a north blocking feature. I'm wondering if a mole is picking up on a sun stratified warming or something, I don't know. But it's turned into like a northern blocking feature, and with the low pressure itself, we'd have to watch out for the potential anyway, for something a little bit more wintry uh, to start uh, developing as we get into February. Right, so uh, that's uh, this is how the overall winter uh, 500 millibar height on looks, by the way. So this is the three months combined, and it is an anti-cyclonic signal. You know, high pressure is very, very much in control for this winter. So, so it's a very different winter what we've had for several years. It's a much, much drier winter, um, and especially so, as we've already explained, in, uh, in uh, December and January. February's a little bit more unsettled, potentially. Uh, with winds coming in off the continent, I mean, it's not in a position to be pulling in very cold air from the northeast, so it's, so it's not a very cold winter. However, as it's an anti-cyclonic winter, we might get some uh, cool or quite chilly weather at times, and, and maybe a little bit more of an easterly type influence when we get through to um, February. Right, let's have a look at the Chogham mid latitude view then, and we'll look at temperature and precipitation uh, anomaly is next. So uh, this is how uh, we're looking for the 500 millibar height anomaly for December. We're in the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it, by the way. We can't see Greenland, Scandinavia, the Arctic, Iceland, all those areas off the chart up there. Have a look at that view down though so we know what's going on. Uh, so we're under high pressure for December, a large reef sitting over the UK and much of Western and Northern Europe as well, uh, to be honest. The temperature anomaly in December is around to a little bit above average. It certainly isn't a greatly mild, but on the other hand, it's not a very cold month either. It is, however, seems to be drier than average, as you'd expect, of course, with high pressure sat over the top of the country. You'd expect a pretty dry month, and uh, that's what the model there is showing with a, with a strong anticyclonic influence. The uh, mean wind direction in December is always a little bit difficult to make these out. Uh, what's happening. So um, where are the black arrows? So we've got black arrows um, looking rather variable. So as we're in a high pressure, we haven't really got much wind, actually. Uh, so so the high pressure is sat around there. So just very variable sort of wind, but probably drifting in from like a southeasterly direction uh, overall. I think you see a little bit better over here. So, uh, so yeah, we'll bring the air in off the continent. I imagine that could be quite chilly. At times, although it is not like a classic sort of Scandinavian high and easterly month. Uh, this is how January looks. Again, quite a strong anti-cyclonic seal with the high pressure sat over and again to the east of the country. So in January, the temperature anom anomaly remains around average to a little bit above. And it's a little bit more of an unsettled month, though, which is slightly surprising. So, uh, particularly more northern, northwestern areas, we do see slightly above average precipitation. However, overall, still largely dry on average for England and Wales, and most of the continent looking pretty dry as well. And the mean wind direction in January is sort of uh, southeasterly again. So, just to our west, we've got southerly to southeasterlies. However, we're close enough to the high pressure, come over here and see a little bit better to show those black arrows sort of pushing towards us from a southeast to easterly type direction. So rather anti-cyclonic, again, pulling the air in off the continent means that, you know, it would be at the very least quite chilly, if not all that cold. And then we get through to February, and we do see a change in February. Uh, it starts to liven up with low pressure developing to our south. We can't see uh, Scandinavia and, and to our north northeast, but there is higher pressure up there. Uh, so the temperature anomaly in February, again, it's very close to average, a little bit above, nothing particularly exciting going on. It is a little bit more of an unsettlement, particularly for England and Wales, wetter than average uh, down there. And finally, the wind direction in February does look a little bit easterly uh, with this. So, uh, again, we see the black arrows sort of pulling in through the country from the east. However, the area is perhaps originating a little bit south of east. Um, so, that could be quite mild, actually. 
very much depends on whether that Scandinavian high is, is in a position to pull in east to this, north east this to east this, or whether we're pulling up east this to some of this to south east this, you see what I mean? It does make a big difference to the overall sort of feel of the weather. I reckon February has the greatest potential to be cold and snowy, but it does depend on the exact position of that high pressure to, to the north east. Uh, so an interesting winter, rather a usual winter, a strange winter um, coming up, really. Uh, particularly, you know, compared to what I've been used to over recent winters, which has tended to be quite wet a lot of the time. This looks like a very uh, much, very much a drier winter, lots of higher pressure in control. And uh, that will uh, provide, you know, a chance of frost and thaw. But it's not a particularly cold winter because we don't get... In Pajama is right, we don't get high pressure far enough north. Now, the Beijing Climate Centre, the other big Asian model, is going for much more in way of northern blocking, uh, which would lead to the chance of a much colder winter. But the, the Japanese, so that's the Chinese model, but the Japanese model suggests just an anti cyclonic, rather cool, frosty type winter, very quiet winter, really dry winter. Till later on, I mean, it starts turning wetter. And if that high pressure does get into a position over Scandinavia to pull in a proper easterly, then it will turn significantly colder uh, with, uh, with snow potential later on in the winter. A lot to play for, a lot to keep an eye on um, with this. And, uh, and of course, you know, it's just one model. JMA is quite a good model. He got last winter pretty much right. Um, so, so, yeah, you know, we'll just wait and see how it uh, plan, uh, pans out. We're going to look at all of the other long-range models on Saturday when we do our third and final um, season model roundup for winter 2021-2022. We get all of those long-range models together. We'll see what we're all showing. But Jeremy will form part of that update, as it always does. But now, you know, we, we won't have time to go through it month by month. But we have done that already, so now you'll know um, when you see it on Saturday uh, how, it, how it works out in terms of month-by-month -month basis. Right, okay, so that's it for today's second video. We're going to be back shortly, or a little bit later on, with the 10 to 14 there. And then don't forget, uh, at 6pm, we've got part two of the 12 winter 2000 and 2022 update. That's going to be an epic watch. But uh, for this update with GMA Seasonal, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.